My next guest has a PhD in psychology and she's the CEO of the Employee Brand Institute, one of Europe's leading employee brand consulting companies. Their mission is to educate and support clients through building their own employee brand. Having assisted hundreds of companies navigate and create a meaningful EVP, it is with pleasure to introduce you to Barbara Zyk on Talent Blazers. Barbara, welcome. Welcome. Hello. Thank you very much for in, in, inviting me. Hello, David. Uh, nice to see you. And um, I'm ready to answer any of your questions <laughs> about EVP employer branding, getting into an uh, organization deeply and playing with data. That's my favorite part. Yeah. I can't wait to unpack this episode. It's going to be a good one. We are going to be talking about the benefits of getting into the incubation period. Um, and it's an important step. Uh, for most companies, they do get it wrong. So, uh, yeah, it'd be really nice to, um, to you know, share what it actually means. Uh, but before we do jump into that, do you mind if you just share a little bit about your background and the company that you're, uh, that you are the CEO of? Yeah, thank you very much for that chance. Uh, yeah, we are. Um, first of all, I'm the CEO of Employee Brand Institute. This is a full, we used to be full service agency. Now, we rather think to uh, think about ourselves like full data agency, which means we are, <laughs> which means we are helping our clients and huge employer brands uh, to um, to get the data right, to understand the data, get the insight, and navigate the develop the deployment of EVP. Not only setting up the EVP, but also activate activating it, selling to the right personas, and checking if they doing right um, if they're going in the right direction. So it's like mostly we play with the strategy with the strategic part of um, in designing the EVP, implementing the EVP and the employer branding strategy. So we much more focus on that. Uh, and we we also developing our own uh, technology uh, platform to get the data from both uh, HR uh, and users, meaning candidates and employees uh, on, on the live in a live session, live tribe to understand how we're navigating the EVP. Um, and that's my, you know, the newest child is uh, Employer Branding Stars, yeah, which is a uh, global, that. yeah, which is a global platform uh, for making people from different parts of the world, states, uh, America, Americas, like uh, like the whole Americas, uh, Europe, uh, APAC, EMEA, like different countries, different different regions. You want to. The, to, to, to build a place where you can we can share and inspire um, uh, each other. And we started it last year. It was a huge success. That was the first event, like really global one. And we think that employer branding can be, uh, can work under one framework. We can understand it similarly. Obvi obviously there are regional um, differences, but uh, this is the place that we, we want to be like a one place for, for guys in employer branding. Um, and this is strictly peer-to-peer -peer, uh, knowledge and experience sharing. So yeah, that's that's that. And the, uh, actually, the, the, this is connected to the event. And the event is going to be held in this fall, September, October, November, different regions. So go to employerbrandingstars.com and check how can you participate, who you want to you know uh, watch, uh, get inspiration from many many great speakers from. Um, different parts of the globe like there's like eight teams sharing the knowledge so this is really really huge thing so yeah and part of it one track is dedicated to strategy and evp and evp is something we're going to talk about today so i'm glad to to be uh, your guest yeah it's, i can't wait to unpack it and and we'll pop the links uh in in uh so anyone can get it get access to to that community and and we highly recommend that people do a peer-to-peer -peer community for employee brands uh, awesome. Um, why don't we why don't we jump into it? But before I do, can you just share you know, what's a typical uh, company profile who's engaging with your services? Um, you know, are we talking enterprise. You know, what sort of um, job titles are people who who are wanting to to um, lead EVPs within orga their organization? Well, we, we're, well, that's the tricky question because if I, you know, told you tell you that we work in <laughs> we working with the global multi multi brands, huge companies, which is true, that would mean that uh, smaller companies are not need, you know, they're not need, 
they're not needing the uh, employer branding uh, an EVP, which is not true. They just have smaller budget. Maybe they are not that conscious. The business is not that conscious that they can use employer branding as a business tools. So it's like we rather work with, uh, we're starting to think about empl employment value proposition and using data when the organization has at least 200 people. But, uh, it, and, but it, most of the times that, that we, we work with the uh, bigger, bigger companies, like thousands of people involved. Uh, but what we see these days uh, with the technology, technolo technology sector, as like uh, employer branding starts there much earlier than in a bigger, co bigger company. So uh, because this is the, the town police um, is obviously very hot and the market is, uh, is on the month. So it's like it depends on the sector, but you usually work with the uh, bigger companies hiring thousands of people. So, mm -hmm. yeah, but still we're trying to, we're trying to, yeah. Let's think. Can you just share, just share what you believe a, a, the optimal team should be, whether it be an individual doing a variety of tasks? What are the types of um, skill sets that are needed um, to really execute an EVP within an organization? Well, we tend to think it was like, let, let's say, a few years um, ago, I would say maybe, maybe even we, before pandemic, it was like, we rather tend to think like we are external consultants who are bringing the knowledge uh, framework and the wisdom uh, and work with the organization, like whole organization, mainly HR people, employer branding teams, maybe sometimes uh, if they've got one. Um, and we are bringing the knowledge into the organization and they are buying it and they, they then they do execution. These days we think in much more uh, in an agile uh, way of thinking, which means we rather educate, uh, give framework, give competencies, and uh, learn employer branding folks, not only employer branding, but let's let's focus on the employer branding teams, how to uh, how to identify EVP, how to understand what EVP is, and how to implement it uh, on on the way, because. It's like this is a problem, and we've seen that many, many, uh, many, many uh, times. Like once you set up the EVP as a construct, as a as a construct, once every two years, let's say, and you're hiring the external consultants to do this, then you just then the team is not understanding it that you know that well. It's not it's not getting the feedback every day, every month, every week uh, properly, and they they just you. I don't want to say that, but it's like it's like it it seems like they don't know how to use this tool as a business tool and how to how to work with that. So we started to so so what you're saying is so what you're saying just in it needs nurturing. It's one of those things that you don't just look look at every two years, but you're adding to yeah, constantly. You, you're working with that. You So you have to, you rather have to know how got the skills and knowledge on what's our EVP and where it's coming from and then how to implement that. And before you set, you're starting the process of setting up the EVP, you have to think about, okay, so how are we going to check that later on? How are we going to sell that? So that's a very important change. Before you start to set up the EVP, uh, you have to think uh, much further, like how to sell it, who should be involved, uh, how we're going to check if we do the, this EVP right, if we're selling to the right persona, if we're selling the right offering, which is about EVP. And you have to think, okay, let's set up the um, research framework or a checking framework, data framework that will let us check and get feedback uh, uh, from the processes recruiting or or you know keeping talents inside uh we should be sh we should be able to get the feedback regularly uh, i would say live every candidate candidates can give you um, feedback every employee leaving your company or um or uh, in starting you, you, the journey should give you a feedback about your evp so this is the change we've made yeah mm -hmm. So you're talking about a dashboard, right? Are you talking about a live dashboard that you that yeah. is that is constantly moving that that is enabling you to 
look at their data and, and make changes as required. What what are some of the aspects of the the uh, dashboard that are really important to to visualize? <laughs> yeah, this is this is fascinating because we're building such dashboards, um, yeah. and this is a fascinating journey with uh, with clients. I would say first of all, you need to have you need to understand. You need to have um, a one framework you're going to use uh, to integrate the data because what we see in these days, and th that's that's that, that's why using the data so different data sources is hard because the data sources are using uh, different frameworks. Let's say we've got Canyon Experience using one framework and Engagement Survey or Employee Experience Survey is using another uh, framework. From I've got my PhD in research, so I can tell you, really, that it's really hard to uh, integrate that kind of data when you're asking people with even using different cafeteria about what do you value in the organization. Uh, if you're using different cafeteria, then the uh, getting uh, the right insights when you integrate the data is hard. So, so uh, are all, you suggesting like, various? Uh, different criteria for different job families or uh, regions or even purposes? Is that what you're suggesting? I don't know. Um, the reverse, uh, maybe you probably, you, you can, you, you can customize your um, surveys, for example, or, or data you're taking. But what I'm uh, saying is uh, before you build any dashboard, uh, or even start the EVP journey, <clears throat> uh, journey is like try to understand and prepare the one framework you're going to use for the candidates and employees. Okay. Gotcha. So it's like this is the shared, shared framework because then you cannot, um, you cannot compare the data uh, using different frameworks. And that's actually the problem with HR people, <laughs> HR departments, uh, uh, not only employer branding teams, uh, that we've got different data different data sources and we cannot match them in one uh, data, data sheet or database and analyze them properly. So it's like before you're starting build, to build any dashboard, you need to understand, you need to design the, the framework and then, uh, then, uh, then you just, uh, you just want to see, uh, how to say it. It's like, because EVP is like we, we, we rather think about EVP as a content part. The, the EVP itself is like a product you have to design and you have to design and make it, um, you want to see, you want, to, you want the, the EVP to be true, adequate and distinctive. So that's three dimensions, but it's rather the content itself. Um, and you have to sell this content this product through the processes. So you have to look at the processes, how you're selling it through the candidate journey and employee journey. So you, you want to see that as well, how this product is being sold, if it's effectively sold or not. And then you want to see the, the outputs and business outputs because you're supporting uh, the, the sourcing part and the attrition part. So it's like, when we build the dashboard, it's like there is definitely a pros process. Uh, there's a dashboard about processes, how effectively we're selling the AVP. Uh, so it is based on two parts. It's like what HR is telling that is, uh, what HR is uh, selling or thinking that is selling to, to guys, to, the, uh, to, the, to the, the, the users like candidates and employees. And then we've got the experience part, what people like candidates and employees are telling us they they get. So this is about the experiences. So when you got this HR part and um, candidates and employees part, then you can see if we are effectively selling the EVP or not. And then we so that's about the process because you re, because you know what it's like having a great EVP is great, but it's like this is the business tool you want to use to bring the right people to your company who are going to deliver your business. So when you think about it like that, so you have to understand, okay, we've got the EVP, we've got the content, but uh, if it's nice, it can be really, really sexy and nice, nicely named, but uh, it's, 
have to be sold through the processes to the to the people to bring the the business. So yeah. it's like so this is the important part, and then we've got the content part like EVP, and then we have to find using this three three dimension model, we have to find something that is true, unique, and uh, distinctive. And then we've got personas part because it's like you know some people are we've got different personas within the organization. Obviously, we want to we want to understand who is. Uh, mm, getting what, who is seeing what, uh, how can we bring these people in, what kind of people we don't want to bring into organization if they and if they if they see what we want to sell. So their experiences, what they're telling us, we can visualize uh, on the on the dashboard and check, let's say we've got IT guys on that job on that great, then what this guy, what this persona meaning guy, <laughs> sorry, uh, it's like what this what this persona is uh, seeing, uh, what, it's, uh, what it's what 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 are the needs? So what should we offer? What should we uh, change in our communication? Are we bringing the right people into the organization using this EVP? So this is this is this is actually the part um, that we are. Uh, yeah. You've set you've set the scene beautifully, Barbara. Because now we're going to talk about the incubation process. <laughs> it's really important that we understand that there's a lot of data to go in just before right. we get to the incubation process. And for those of you who don't know what the incubation process, we're about to unpack that. Um, but how long? Uh, just give us a general guide, like um, a range. Like how long does it take? Say a company that has you know, four or 5,000 staff, you know, they've got a couple of job families that they really want to execute an EVP across. How long should they be thinking about um, collecting all the important bits of data before they get to that incubation period? Is there a bit of a range? Yeah, it is. We usually... um... Because it's not going to take a few days. It's not going to take a few weeks. Right. It should, right. it sh- if it's going to be meaningful, it's going to take time, right? It's going to take time. And how much time is the right amount of time? Uh, definitely it depends on uh, how much advanced you are uh, with playing the data and collecting the data. If you are starting, let's say you, uh, the old model is like three months um uh, we need three months to uh, to collect all the data using uh, the old approach. Like old means we go into the organization, we take, we collect all the data we need using different different uh, tools, uh, like interviews, uh, surveys, uh, workshop, etc. So and desk research. So three months is like this is this this is the for the for the big organization it's enough, mm, and. Once we think, okay, let's start the journey playing with the data, we have to install the survey links into the different part of the processes like uh, talent acquisition, onboarding, uh, engagement, communication, exit interviews. So we have to we have to spend much more to set up these uh, data sourcing points that you're going to need to visualize on the dashboard. So then. Uh, it depends on how well this uh, playing with the data and openness to playing with the data the organization is. So the, the, it can take, if it's the, the first time, uh, it can take a few weeks to, you know, get the agreement, get the different um, departments on board, data protection guys, IT guys, etc. So this this is the ne- an extra time, but it's really... Uh, profitable but because once you set it up then you use it uh, along the way so that's the that's exercise wor- worth uh, doing at the very beginning so but let's let's say it's like three four months of uh, looking at the data getting collecting data different different department different job families different uh, grades uh, you want to see obviously the uh, c-level guys what they trying to sell to people what they vision or you want to see the marketing guys, uh, what they're selling, because you have to be in line with what marketing selling, because the correlation with the marketing and the bre- consumer brand is so huge with the, when, you, when you think about the employer branding. So you want to, to understand how, what they're going to sell in the next uh, 12 months. And then you want obviously understand the candidates, uh, candidates' needs and how they look at the brand and employees uh, experiences how they how they perceive what you're trying to sell so this is like the huge 
I would yeah. say like maybe not a huge process. It's, going to take yeah, time. it's taking time. It's taking time. But uh, this is funny actually because once we started to coach teams uh, how to do this, providing them the network and tools, etc. Uh, it seems like this time is even longer because they have to catch up, uh, you know, how to how to do this. Uh, they do it uh, on their own. So it's like at my my time, uh, maybe like four months, maybe it's like this is the, 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 the typical process. Yeah. OK, thanks for sharing. Now, the incubation process, uh, it's a really critical mm -hmm. step, um, you know, in, in, in having a meaningful EVP. Um, just give us a bit of a definition around, you know, this, this important uh, step in the process. What does it mean? Well, you probably know that incubation, you probably, you probably connect incubation with the creative process, which is right, because it's the moment when the, is the, actually the process when the, uh, things uh, coming from the chaos to the point that you understand and you've got you see the clear clear picture and you said aha that's uh, now I understand what should we sh what should be done what's the solution so it's like between you do you know nothing or you think oh my, there's so much that there is a mess I'm seeing uh, to the to the to the stage that you exactly know the, what should be the solution and it used to be uh, this is because it 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 it, it, it is used uh, in marketing mostly most of the time but the process behind it's connected to our brains needing the closure because our brains uh, need the closure and they and and the brain is looking for the closure looking for the answers uh till the, the find one so so it's like this is the this it's is normal. The great... This is this is normal. <laughs> yeah, it's the, and they need to is, embrace the this chaos. This is normal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's how we, as a human beings, uh, you know, uh, function. So we use it when we play with data because this is a fascinating tool. Because we, tr uh, as a researchers and data players, what we do, we're trying not to. Uh, think about the solution before we get all the data. Not to be, not to bias the process, you know. So you, we're not setting any hypothesis before we have uh, finished the uh, that data collection uh, process. So we try to be not biased. So that's why we are not looking for solution when we are collecting the data. So once we collecting, we, we, once we uh, stop collecting data, and that's and we definitely know where is, you know the exact, exact time when, when it's finishing. So so once we stop collecting data, then we start the incubation process, which means like thinking about, okay, so what out of this massive data uh, and different sources of data, like candidates, age, candidate experience, HR um, processes, employee experience, employee engagement, uh, C-level talking about this, marketing talking about this, competitors landscape talking about this, social media buzzing about your brand. So this is a many, many information points. So uh, you, you just trying to, you're setting up the incubation process like, okay, so we now try to, we have to go to the data and, uh, and review them, looking for the solution for that particular organization. And that's, what we call incubation process it took us like two weeks uh and we designed the process of working with clients like giving because you you cannot hurry this process you, you can't hurry it to, can you it is no, very no. very important to and if the business is putting pressure on you to deliver something this is not the time yeah. right Right. This is the time to play with data, to find different solutions, to, to, to try to imagine, test the solutions and trying to get the insight from the data, like from all this data you collected. And I know it's like maybe this is not a, like science bake, uh, bake uh, part because it's like probably would rather would like to, to hear like, oh, we've got the data and it's obvious. But when you are not using one framework, it cannot be obvious because you have to, your brain have to think about different, different insights and try to collect them, try, try to analyze them and get the solution right. So that's when the C level perspective is very, very important because you have to, you have to understand what you, what kind of um, business you're bringing to the table, which means what business wants and how you can. Uh, use your EVP as a product 
to 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 deliver uh, the the outcomes, and that's 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 the important part because it's not like okay, we've got people are talking, people are telling us this is the um, this this is a strong uh, point of our offer. Let's uh, focus on this strong po point of our offer and let's sell it to the market. It's not that easy because selling your strong points is not the way. Uh, you want to sell the things that are bringing people and bringing pe people who are bringing the business. So it's like, so this is actually the fascinating part, and uh, I really love it because this is the, the 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 phase that we are playing with my team sometimes with the with the client. Like, okay, so we know the retention, the attrition, all the data we've got. Let's let's find a solution out of this data to bring the business results. Yeah. So I really encourage you to think about incubation process as a part of your uh, step on the EVP discovery uh, way uh, because this is, this can be very powerful. It's natural. It's it's you know our brain are are working like that. And and what's the next step past the incubation process? That's uh, that's the amplification uh, side of things. It's like you know. This is where we're not just testing anymore. We're maybe iterating a little bit, but we're looking for for opportunities to amplify. Is that is that the next step uh, post the incubation process? Yeah. Uh, after that, it should be clear, and obviously you have to you have to write it down. I you know design the names, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but uh, but you have to. It's clear uh, to who you're selling your offer, which is persona said. What are you offering them? What do you have? To, what do you have to offer them to bring them to the business? And what should be done internally? Because externally is easy, like talent acquisition, which is sometimes very close to employer branding, and is I, I, this this is something that I don't like actually about talent acquisition, telling that they are doing employer branding that much because it's not about it's not about talent acquisition only. Uh, we use talent acquisition to sell the to sell the offering, um, which is AVP, to bring people uh, to, to 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 the organization. And the confirmation point for talent acquisition is not like people accepting our job offer. It's like people staying at least for like twelve months, three month, three years within our organization. So this should be a confirmation point. But it's like. This is this is the story for another podcast probably, <laughs> but I think yeah, so. But, the ROI. I'd love to uh, dig deep into the ROI and how people yeah. should be thinking about it. I think, yeah, unpacking that would uh, would, would be super interesting. Yeah, yeah, but it's like, uh, uh, but coming back to your question, it's like, uh, so you we've got you've got your personas, you've got your offering that is tailored to these personas' needs. It should be unique somehow on the market. Uh, so then you know what your EVP pillars are, and uh, so that's the that's the basic. But then you have to check, and the data should bring you the answers as well. You should you should find the leverage points, uh, what you're not doing or what you should do more um, within your processes to sell this to sell this EVP better which is about setting the goals and kpis and then you have to bring obviously the guys who are who are going to deliver that which is talent acquisition guys from onboarding learning development communication leadership should be on board so they all understand what's the what's the, what's the shared goal what we're selling but also how we should design the processes to make it um, to build the experiences we want to, to build and keep our talents. So this is the actually operational strategy uh, is the most important part of setting the EVP because I've seen many, many uh, EVPs who are not being you know, sold properly. So you, made an exer you make an exercise, like let's say you, you're putting budget, you, you're putting resources there and you, if, if when you finish the EVP with like a bunch of statement, even if it's, you know, well packed, but it's still a, a bunch of statement, and you have no idea how to sell it, no action plan, like you know, well planned. So, so um, when you're talking about operationalizing the EVP, you're talking about you know each each of those like um, talent uh, talent acquisition, marketing, internal comms, hiring managers. Yeah. You're talking about them having some sort of 
toolkit, right? Like your yep. that yep. that's what you're that's what you're thinking is Definitely. best practice for to arm yep. them so that they they're pushing out that that uh, EVP. Yep. So the set or, of activations. Or the new employer blending, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is a set of activations, but it's uh, planned, you, you know, uh, using the kind of timeline. Uh, so who is doing what, when it's going to happen, and the most important part: how are we going to know that this is working? So it is about feedback loop, uh, feedback loops on that is going to tell you: okay, are we are we delivering the EVP? Are are we on the way? Are, this is a good a good good uh, good uh, direction or not? So this is the important, the most important part is like setting. How will how how do we know that we are delivering uh, right? Uh, because we you know it's like without this, this is only a bunch of statement that we wish to work, but yeah, I know <laughs> yeah. I'm with you. I, I think people are going to have to tune in to to the the next few episodes because we will be talking about operationalizing an EVP yeah. Yeah. as well as an R, getting an ROI, managing the business expectation. Um, but I have found this a fascinating conversation. I'm absolutely uh, thrilled to have spoken to you, Barbara. Thank you for sharing your experiences, not just with EVP, but the really important step of the incubation process, taking into consideration the the vast amount of uh, data that, that uh, employ brand people or consultants uh, are shifting through so that they're able to build a meaningful EVP. So thank you, Barbara, for joining me on Talent Blazers. Thank you very much for inviting me and finger crossed guys uh, for your EVP and your journeys.